Okay, so first up, we've got a question from Jared Sinot, who asks, can animals cry, and is there an underwater version of crying? Well, I guess that depends on how you define crying, because on one hand, nearly all land mammals produce tears, but these tears are used to keep their eyes moist and lubricated, so they can move easily and it helps to protect them from dirt and dust. But human tears are well, often attributed to emotions, so things like extreme happiness or sadness, and that's where things start to get a bit more tricky. Other primates sort of bring emotional expression through just vocalisations, mm. big calls like, <laughs> That's quite emotional. <laughs> yeah. So crying is often the way we describe the vocalisations from infant um, apes and monkeys. When they're being weaned or separated from their mothers, they make noises a little bit like Sam <laughs> just showed you. But we never actually would well, never recorded the streaming of tears when like accompanying these sounds. Not in primates, but we have seen it in elephants actually. Oh. Um, and elephants are obviously very social animals. With really tight bonds, and they have been seen to have these streaming tears, um, and they're even known to mourn the death of their other family members. See, that's, that's all very sweet, but the key here is emotions. We just cannot tell for sure ever what an animal is feeling, because emotion is something you have to experience, and with science you need something tangible you can measure, and we just simply can't do that. So we can't assume that animal tears equate to the same as a human having a, a good old sob. But as for crying underwater, it gets even tougher. Uh, we can kind of assume that most marine mammals do produce tears above yeah. the surface, and we'll probably be doing the same under the water, but because tears are 97% water, they tend to get washed away and we can't really tell what's going on. Right, next question. Jason Reggie has asked us, are jellyfish and octopi the animals with the most amount of legs in the animal kingdom, and how many animals have odd number of legs naturally? Well, good question. So first up, jellyfish don't actually really have legs. They've got no. tentacles, and they can have from eight to hundreds. Um, but as you say, if we're starting with lots of legs, we should probably start with the octopus. Yeah, so octopi, octopoda, octopuses, they're all the same thing, and they have eight legs, hence the oct at the beginning of their name. But um, whilst they're certainly doing better than us bipedals, um, there are certainly other animals who are doing better in the leg stakes. Yeah, so one up from the octopus, we've got the decapods, the crabs, the shrimps, the lobsters, and they've got 10 legs. Mm -hmm. And then you've got wood lice, who've got 14 legs. Uh, one up from that, you've got caterpillars, who've got 16 legs. And then you're entering the murky world of millipedes and centipedes, who've got loads of legs. Yeah, they've got more legs than they know what to do with. But the garden centipede, which is a small, soil-dwelling arthropod, as they grow and molt, they add segments and legs to their bodies, so they end up with 12 sets of legs, totalling 24 appendages. Which is pretty impressive, but all of those pale into insignificance when compared to the white millipede, Lacme planipes, which is Latin for the pinnacle of plentiful legs. <laughs> Just being one to three centimetres long, it's got an incredible 750 legs. Wow. Which is more legs than anything in the world that we know of. So what about odd numbers of legs? Yeah, well I guess it all depends on how you define a leg. If we're going as a, an appendage that can move independently, then I guess you could probably include uh, gastropods like snails that effectively have a single leg or a foot. Yeah. Um, and I mean, even though they're often called arms, you could include starfish and sun stars, um, because actually on those arms they have hundreds, if not thousands, of tiny little tube feet. Oh. And that's how they get around. So they've got between sort of five and fifty. So right. again, a few sort of odd numbers in there. So with legs or appendages being used mainly for travel, uh, I think we could say that having an odd number of legs might hinder your movement slightly. Yeah, if you've ever been in a three-legged race, you'll know what we mean. <laughs> Once again, thank you for your comments. Uh, subscribe to Earth Unplugged, share this with your friends, and we will see you soon. Bye. Bye. A mother octopus may lay 50,000 to 200,000 eggs and she will guard them for 40 days until they hatch. She never ever leaves their side, not even for food. In fact, to keep hunger at bay, she may even eat one of her own arms. Now, as humans, we're used to seeing dogs wagging their tail and we make the assumption that that means that they're happy. But how do we know that? How do we know without talking to them and asking them what they're really feeling? Well, what we do know is that in humans, a part of the brain called the caudate nucleus, which is this part here, is stimulated when we enjoy things. 